Welcome back to the Red Dirt Road Podcast. 2022. Because this is the first episode of 2022. We are recording this in 2021, just before Christmas. And we got Alex, my cousin, back on here. How's it going? Good. How are you? It's good to be back. Thanks for having me again. It's good to be a triumphant return. Good. Yes. Remember the last time I was on, it was uh, the live version of the show where we dished Dan and Shay for about an hour and a half. That was a fun. That was a fun episode. Our first live show ever that we did in my living room. Going to try to do some more live little uh, little shows this year. I'm going to try to get pumped up for this episode, even though we're recording this in 2021 for the listeners, 2022. So later to come will be the first episode that we're actually in the next year. But so before we get into the song, uh, you know, obviously you were kind of uh, you were the co-host. And had kind of stepped away, didn't really uh, address it very much. You kind of got your own podcast of your own, what you do. And so I guess just tell the listeners kind of what you've been up to since then, you know, going back to college and starting up your own podcast. Yeah, no, well, since then, I have uh, done some soul searching and some uh, some researching with a buddy of mine, and I got in contact with uh, the director of men's of hockey operations for the Cornell University men's hockey team. And, uh, and that's the school I go to for the listeners. Uh, and uh, so when I was in Ithaca, they approached me about starting a podcast with uh, another friend of mine for the big red men's hockey team as a way to promote content for the team. And just to, you know, get the people who like podcasts, a Cornell hockey podcast and we call it the big red hockey cast release episodes every wednesday actually we just released a new episode today it's on spotify for those of you who want to check it out if you guys are anything uh guys love hockey but that's that's my been one of my passions for a long time just like country music for me it's country music and hockey those are the two things so that is what i've been up to and we've we've had a very uh a lot of fun doing it but it's always nice to come back to where it all started where i got my first taste of podcasting on the 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 red dirt road podcast so thanks for having me back i appreciate it yeah it's tough to do two different podcasts i got this one and then the fake punt but yeah how's that going the fake punt you know we're gonna finish out the season we'll see how uh what happens after that red dirt road podcast though is taking off it's it's going big Hoping to have Alex back on for different episodes this year, and oh, yeah. just super excited for the year. That's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit different. I got some questions actually for you. I didn't prepare you them, but oh. I got some questions okay. later. I'm gonna have this be a little bit more of an interview style, a little bit. All got right, some, got a no. That's not, fair. Nothing, nothing too difficult. But oh, okay, kicking it off this year. So another big change this year. Um, we're kind of shifting away from just being a Brooks and Dunn podcast. So if you guys out there are Brooks and Dunn fans, don't worry, still be Brooks and Dunn. But it's going to be more traditional and neo-traditional country music, kind of about 50-50 to the non-Brooks and Dunn. And so starting this one off with a Brooks and Dunn song where they're featured on, next one will not be one. <clears throat> so right. this song, I have a lot to say about it, but we're going to get into the breakdown of the song first. So Blake Shelton, he's got this album, Body Language, came out earlier this year. And then a lot of you guys, you might not even know, Brooks and Dunn came out with a new song that he's on. Uh, his deluxe version of the album just came out in December 2021. And this song, it's called Throw It On Back, Blake Shelton featuring Brooks and Dunn. It is written by Bobby Pinson, 
Ben Hayslip and Rhett Atkins. So did a little looking. Uh, they're mostly known for being songwriters. Bobby Pinson, you'd be interested to know this. He actually co-wrote Made in America by Kobe Keith. So he's oh, that okay. guy. He, he's got a lot of songs mm-hmm. that he's wrote, written for Toby Keith. Uh, ben Hayslip is a guy in his early 50s, uh, singer, songwriter, or mostly songwriter. And then Rhett Adkins is actually the father of Thomas Rhett, who was a, he's a singer, songwriter, and he's got a song that's probably, it's my favorite song of his called That Ain't My Truck, who, which he uh, performed and co-wrote, I believe in the 90s. So some notable songwriters on there. And then yeah. get into my lyrical breakdown and, and, and such of the song. So it's got like a 20 second sort of intro it comes in with the drums and then the band comes in first verse, Blake Shelton, he starts singing only four lines is this first, first uh, verse, very short. He's sort of talking about, he mentions an old hat, an old stereo or sorry, an old truck and an old stereo, and then a hat that gets the ladies. Don't know why the hat gets the ladies, but must be a pretty good hat. The chorus talks about an old pair of denim jeans, a good time out at a honky-tonk bar with some old-school music, acting like a fool, which pretty much is mean in drinking and having fun. <clears throat> and right here, we understand that throw it on back, it's kind of got the double meaning. To throw it on back to the good old days and also throw back a shot or a beer. Second verse, we got our old man Ronnie Dunn comes in. By the way, Kix Brooks, I hear nothing of him in this entire song. I don't know. Oh, no, and he nothing. obviously did I didn't not, get anything from him. <clears throat> he didn't write the song. So I'm not sure if he's playing guitar or something, but singing, I don't think he sings at all. Second verse. So first line of this, I found to be very interesting. And I'll ask you what you think of this. Still got a few of my old running buddies. Now, what what in the world? My I, When I listened to this, I was like, I got to see what this is saying. My old running buddies. Is this kind of, what, what's, what's this supposed to, is this literally meaning? Because I ran track and cross country. And typically, you don't see track and cross country references in country music just because i mean I, I don't actually think he means like running buddies and the reason i say it is because he's like oh uh, the next line he follows that up with is know how to blow a little smoke and blow a little money i i don't necessarily think he's talking uh like physical running buddies but maybe just a bunch of guys that he likes to chill with <clears throat> and blow off steam with because you know, maybe that's just done for the sake of the prose of the song and the rhyme scheme, but I don't know. That's that's just my view on it. There, it would be better if it did, if it if it did have to do with cross country and track because that would yeah. be the first reference that I've ever heard. But I did I looked up, and these songwriters for this uh, for this song, they all played sports. It seemed like, but I didn't see anything about track or cross country. In fact, Rhett Adkins played football at the university of georgia i feel like they could have ran track in there somewhere oh yeah Rhett, well, ronnie Rhett dunn Hankins, yeah not, ronnie dunn did not write this song so i don't know i mean i'm not sure i've never heard of anyone say running buddies like that yeah but. i i'm not i've not heard that that uh, now maybe i'm just too young maybe we are both too young to understand this Maybe that's what they called their their buddies that they like to go and chill with. They call them their run buddies. But like I in my generation, if you say, Oh, I got some running buddies, I'm gonna assume that you are a a runner, like you know, guys that you go running with. But I don't I, know. I Googled running buddies and you know what we're thinking of came up. I didn't see anything else. Didn't do a ton of uh digging on that, but I'll have to ask, uh, I'll ask someone else. Yeah, got to ask someone of an older generation. That way, they probably have a, you know, yeah, better chance. Of- and then the the rest of the things he's talking about, he says, smoke. Uh, he's, he's on a smoke, spend some money, 
He's got a belt buckle that'll still hold shine and a few old pickup lines. Towards the end of that verse, I think Ronnie Dunn's voice sounds very good, especially for his age. Doesn't doesn't show age at all. The, the second chorus comes in. You get Ronnie Dunn and Blake Shelton singing. Uh, you got a guitar solo type thing. And then the third verse basically uh, is uh, Ronnie Dunn and Blake Shelton kind of doing a like a call and answer type thing, kind of a, a duet section there. They're both singing, but not really at the same time as much. And then you get, finish out with the last chorus. Yeah. So uh, kind of a lot to break down more than I thought there would be for that song. But what, what do you, what do you think about this? Uh, well, I, I like this song. <clears throat> I am an avid Blake Shelton fan. So I, I like to see when he gets new music out uh, on a personal level. I don't think it's his best. Uh, I haven't listened to uh, all of body language. I'll be honest with you. Only, only listened to uh, this song. Uh, just yeah, I didn't even. I actually didn't even know he had released a new album, and I gotta, I gotta check that out. Full disclosure, but I, uh, I did like the song. I think that um, this song, in a way, reminds me a lot of Toby Keith had a song back in the day called "I Ain't As Good As I Once Was," and that essentially uses time as a a double entendre, as an illusion. And this throw it on back, the illusion of time and the double meaning, like you said, like time is always ticking. You know, the, the, the clock don't stop, as uh, Freddie McCreary uh, uh, said, or Scotty McCreary, sorry. And uh, the, I can't believe I just said that. That was a gaffe. But Freddie Krueger? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Scotty McCreary. I, I meant to say Scott. I had Freddie Krueger in my head and I said Scotty, uh, Freddie McCreary. Freddie McCreary. <clears throat> That'll make it on the blooper reel. No, but uh, what I was talking about, um, they it, it uses time as this illusion. And like Blake Shelton, I mean, he's not that young anymore. I mean, I'm not saying he's terribly old because he's not. He's not over the hill. He's got plenty of good music. I looked it up. He's younger than I thought he would be. I thought he would have been in his 50s, our parents' age, actually 45. Wow. Oh little, yeah, so he's a little not, younger. Not, that's not that's not very old. That's kind of a uh, no. Yeah, that's that's a little younger. But he's about ten years younger than I thought he would have been. No, he's still yeah. He's no. That's he's he's not a spring chicken, but he's also like you know not. Uh, there's also like a too old to be wild and free, but still too young to be over the hillside. That's Kenny Chesney right there. But uh, that that definitely. I think the 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 purpose of this song is a lot like the Toby Keith song, I Ain't As Good As I Once Was. And that's why I think that Brooks and Dunn, and Ronnie Dunn specifically, is a great choice to have on this song because he's throwing it on back to a, a simpler time in, in, in his perspective. The time when he was younger and the time that he you know really knew how to let loose. And, of course, Ronnie Dunn was a, a figurehead in the time when he, he was younger, when he was in his 20s. And so he's paying homage to that, paying homage to the country music lifestyle of days gone by in that way. And that's kind of what I liked about this song. Now, I have one other one critique about this song, and that's the intro. I think that that first verse is underdeveloped. And I know you only mentioned it's uh, it's about five lines. I think he could have done a lot more with that. I think that, well, and I don't necessarily think it's his fault. I think uh, because, you know, he didn't write the song, but I feel that in country music nowadays, there's this desire to have a hook like intro or melody that instantly turns to the chorus within less than 45 seconds. And then like in order to keep people listening to it so they don't like skip the song. And I don't understand why that is. Like, I think that he could have done a lot more to build on that first verse. And because Blake Shelton is an amazing singer. And I think that Red Akins too, Red Akins is an unbelievable songwriter. I'm not really well acquainted with the other two, but I know that Red Akins, you know, the father of Thomas Rhett, he's a great songwriter. I think that there's a lot more that they could have done. 
So I'm glad you had it on here because I completely disagree. <laughs> I hate this song. Um, no, I agree about the intro part, but I do not like this song at all. I was so disappointed because I saw Brooks and Dunn was going to be on here. And Ronnie Dunn has had some great songs this year. Where the Neon Lies with Tristan uh, Baraz or something like that, I thought was great. I think his vocals are still very good. You got that song Jones in, which we were down at Cornell. We were blasting that song. Yeah. I love that song Jones, and that's a great one with Jake oh, Owen. It's a great song. And so yeah. Ronnie Dunn still got it. And I think Ronnie Dunn wants to have sort of still that 90s country. But <clears throat> this, this song, so here's the thing. We're kind of in mainstream modern country, contemporary Nashville country. There's this sort of little subgenre, little little type of song that's coming up. Because this isn't really a, a pop country song. And it's not really a super bro country, but there's this type of song that's coming up. It's definitely very rock influenced, but there's these types of songs that they mention throwing back to some older time not really like that old but like 90s uh maybe 2000s 80s stuff like that around the brooks and dunn era yeah but they don't sound like it that's the problem like this song all the things that they mention in it you know that's fine and dandy but the song does not sound like a brooks and dunn song or a joe diffie song it sounds just kind of like you know the other Blake Shelton singles that he has. I didn't listen to the other songs on the album, but typically every time he gets a single, uh, it pops up on my Spotify, I listen to it. And I liked God's Country, but I don't really like a lot of the new stuff he does. I loved like Austin from back. That was like his first single. That was a great song. He's had some yeah. good songs over the years, but his new stuff is just kind of, you know, just kind of mainstream country. And this, this song, whether you like it or not, that's fine, but it doesn't sound old. It doesn't sound, if the message you're trying to get across is old stuff, you know, the song should sound older. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. Like, I, I understand your point there that, <clears throat> like, I, I disagree with you and you saying you don't like the song at all. Like, I, I'm surprised because, you know, it's got, it's got Ronnie Dunn on it, man. Like, even that as a baseline in my opinion, makes it pretty decent. So like, even though, and, and, and I said, like, I do not like, um, I am more of an older um, Blake Shelton fan like you. Um, I, I agree that, you know, mainstream country uh, music has started to become more like electronic. And it also has these newer sounding uh, songs that are paying tribute to older uh, to older music, but don't sound um, old at all. Uh, I mean, and a prime example of, of that would be uh, "What's Your Country Song" by Thomas Rhett. Like, you know, I I listened to that song with somebody else, and no, I and they had no idea what the lyrics meant. I'm like, dude, he references like 30 timeless like country music artists and songs, and nobody knows what it means. And I'm like, There's what the hell? I, I, had, I had forgotten about that one. There's another one that I just had thought of. I believe it's called 90s Country Stuff by Walker Hayes. I'm looking it up right now. Wait, is that the – wait, Walker Hayes. No, no, no That's the just, guy who does the fancy, like, the TikTok yeah. song. Oh, my God. And there's, there's a song. It's called 90s Country. He's got a song. So there's – basically what I'm trying to get at. There's a lot of these songs coming out that – throwback to the 90s country era but they don't sound like that at all and you know it's like this song to me right ronnie dunn's voice sounds great on it but i the, the rest of the song to me it sounds bland it sounds boring uh -huh. don't like it um yeah no that that's fair you, you know i i, I it, I'll it's not that. the worst it's not the worst song i've ever heard but I guess just as far as disappointing, very disappointing more than every more than anything. It, it, it's not Dan and Shay is what you're saying. It's pretty bad, but better it's better than Dan no, and Shea. much better than Dan and Shay. But you know, when I when I see when I see a song that's by Brooks and Dunn, I'm like, okay, I would expect more, you know. So 
Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess you got to keep in mind that Brooks and Dunn is only a feature on this song. Like, you know, Blake Shelton is largely taking the reins here. It's not like where the neon lies. Like, I mean, uh, the, what's the the guy who wrote, uh, uh, Tristan Mraz, like you said, he's he's one of the guys. That I get the sense that they're more like Texas country, and Texas country has become the new like. I don't want to say neo outlaw country or the new like like you said bro country but but this is not that like Blake Shelton he lives in Nashville he lives in Tennessee he's not um and and he's kind of I get the sense like a lot of uh, a lot of older artists that are releasing newer material they're just trying their record labels are trying to get stuff that'll sell they're trying to create another God's country and I mean God's country isn't that bad it, it, like I, I don't think it's bad at all. I think it's uh, just a little bit mediocre, honestly. But it, like in that regard, I think that this is a good. Uh, it, it, it's it's another classic example of songs that are throwing themselves back to a foregone era, but it doesn't necessarily take any of the influences of that era. Like I would have liked to see a little bit more Brooks and Dunn style like a steel guitar or, or, or even like the, you know, the beat and stuff, you, you could have done a lot more with it. I yeah, think I could have got a lot more, more creative to me, just as a last thought to me, this is a Blake Shelton song. Like you said, where they just, they grabbed Ronnie Dunn, they threw him on here and they got a lot of stuff talking about drinking and old stuff, but yeah, just the sound the sound ain't there. You know what I mean? Like the sound, you know, it doesn't, doesn't pass the ear test. You know what I mean? Like if I was, if I was going to play this at the VFW, you know, or <laughs> if I was going to play yeah. this at a bar, you know, mm-hmm. the old timers wouldn't, wouldn't pass the test. You know, these Ronnie Dunn songs that came out this year, they would, you know, so. I, I, I think the new kids would like it though. Oh, well, yeah. This podcast ain't for them. <laughs> I know. I know that, that, that being said, I, I just saying, you know, I think it sounds pretty decent. It's not amazing, but it's still something I'd listen to. Like, you know, I'm not going to press skip when it shows up. It's like one of those, you, you ever done that? Like, you know, songs that you're constantly scrolling through on your Spotify, but yet just one is just catchy enough that you just listen to it, even though you wanted to skip it initially. Yeah. All right. Before we go. I promised you I got a couple questions. So, okay. These are going to be New Year's Eve themed ones because this is our New Year's Eve episode. Okay. Well, sort of. We have one that's going to be just before New Year's Eve. Uh, This one's just after New Year's. So question one and two combined here. New Year's traditions. So I kind of know this already because we've – spent time on new year's but for our listeners any new year's eve traditions and then new year's day traditions new year's day might be a little bit harder but you know uh i i can tell you with the new year's eve okay new year's eve firstly uh your dad or my uncle uh would every year if he shoots a deer he pickles the deer heart and then my uncle and I have a have a tradition. It's it's been going on like you know four or five deer years heart. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating the deer heart at midnight. That's what we do. I know it sounds like some sort of ritualistic occult stuff there, but I swear it's not that. This is just it's so good, and, and we eat the deer heart at midnight when the ball drops. And then on top of that, I know that um, we do do the white elephant. I know the. Uh, a couple cousins tried to get that going. Uh, I know last year they had to postpone it because of COVID because we weren't able to come out. But um, and then on top of that, I think we do um, we do this interesting thing that uh, one of our other cousins came up with, where take a whole bunch of goodies like lottery tickets, candy bars, what have you, wrap it all up in a bunch of saran wrap, and you got to take uh, a pair of oven mitts. And you have to like unscramble the bag of good, like the wrap of goodies. And you have to do it while somebody else is 
rolling a pair of dice and you have to you have to roll doubles on the dice to get to pass the uh the 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 saran wrap ball to the next person and whoever gets the most goodies out of the saran wrap ball wins now that it, it, it sounds easy I, I swear to you it's not it's one of the most difficult things i've done with a every time movie. you guys do this i miss out on it there was one year someone called me every time i've never gotten in on it dude dude i i won a lot i won a lottery ticket and i got three king size reese's cups that was that was my best haul one year but the other year dude i i, I the other year was difficult for me because I had to get the hang of it. But once you get the hang of it, that's what's it's what you. All right. So that's New Year's Eve. Any New Year's Day traditions? Some people got some New Year's Day. Some people, I think the two classic examples are jumping in the lake. People do. And then sometimes there's, there's always college bowl games. So do you got anything before we head out here? Any New Year's Day traditions? Honestly, we go riding with the four wheelers. That, that's one thing that we have done without fail on New Year's Day consistently uh, is we get up and sometimes we've had breakfast at grandma's. I know that like, you know, we, we used to go over there and do that. But uh, that usually it usually centers around, you know, we sleep in um, and then you go for a ride around 10, 11 o'clock. First official uh quad ride of 2022 or the new year that's what we've always done but uh yeah it's a. Uh, I would say for me traditions. you know just having fun new year's eve night nothing no special tradition that i have and then new year's day it's always a lot more chill we always got a football game on got a bowl game and there's usually a kind of a small family party i actually got a close cousin on the other side of my family that uh born i believe new year's eve so we always celebrate per- birthday on a uh, new year's day so wow yeah i was gonna say new year's N- new year's day you got to keep it chill i mean you're sleeping off the hangover or whatever i mean you know sweet well that is gonna be it for the first episode of 2022 very excited for this year we're gonna have I don't know if I officially announced this the last time. Matt Chase is a good friend. Uh, he's become a friend of mine, a country music artist. He's going to be on here once a month talking about music and stuff. He got his single actually dropping New Year's Day. So it's out by the time this is out. So I'm excited for that. Excited for this year. We'll see you guys all next time.